Hi, I'm Steve. I'm Eve. And we work together under the name of Eve and Steve. And we thought today that we would start the studio tour by showing our outdoor uh, monuments to now uh, Hayfield Art Gallery that we set up uh, during uh, this time of quarantine and pandemic so people could drive by and experience these monumental artworks uh, from the safety of their own car. There's a total of five artworks installed and much like all of our work, it starts out as me making a photograph and then Eve, uh, in this case, painting directly on the surface of the artworks. Um, what do you want to say, Eve? Uh, we should tell people that we are located in Paulette, Vermont. And if you want to come see our drive-by artworks in a Vermont hayfield, it's on River Road. All you have to do is drive by and you can't miss it. Yeah, the artworks range in size anywhere from, I think, like 8 or 10 feet out to the largest piece, uh, which is the one that's uh, right there now we're looking at, which is over 34 feet wide. Some of the pieces are 13 feet high, um, and it will be a rotating exhibit. We will be adding a new work uh, come springtime. And if people want to get closer to the artwork, all you have to do is park in our lot. We have uh, signs instructing people, and we have a nice path that people can hike through the field and go right up close to the artworks and still be very safe during a time of pandemic. So why don't we go in the studio and get warm? Sounds good. All right. So welcome uh, to Indian Hill, uh, the home, home of, of Eve and Steve. Eve and Steve. <laughs> um, our studio is built in an 1840s era sheep barn uh, that back in 2000, we converted and built into a gallery space. And since that time, uh, the building has morphed into our working studio space, as well as a place where we can exhibit our artworks, we can meet with clients, and we can work on building shows uh, and sort of seeing them real time on the wall. So Steve and I met while both studying photography at RIT, the Rochester Institute of Technology, in 1995. We were both studying photography at the time. We then graduated and moved to Vermont. And at that point, I became an author, uh, a writer, and I've published two books. Uh, and in the meantime, Steve continued making his work for the next 20 some odd years. Then in 2019, we decided to team up and pool our different creative interests. And so in these new works that are even Steve artworks, Steve does the imagery photographically in camera on film. He exclusively works with film and he exclusively makes one of a kind artworks. They're not done in a series or an edition. Um, once the artwork is created, I then come in and I will create the words that then get handwritten by me on the surface of the works. In some cases, these are fictional stories completely uh, uh, made up. In other cases, they're based on the history uh, or the location, and I'll do lots of research. This particular piece that you're looking at right now is called My Dear Grace. This is a historical work that um, was, was uh, created by me working with the Vermont Historical Society that has a beautiful collection of letters that were written between uh, Calvin Coolidge, future president, and his future wife, Grace Goodhue. And what I loved about these letters is that it gave you a completely different perspective on Calvin Coolidge, the young man. Um, not, not a way we're used to thinking of him. So in my photography, uh, one of the things that I've always been passionate about beyond film is working with rare and handmade papers and materials. I love where in an artwork the distinction between the actual photograph and the paper blur and the paper becomes part of the content. So in the piece, My Dear Grace, that Eve was just talking about, this is printed on rare amate paper. Amate has been made for 3,000 years in central Mexico and predates the Mayans and the Aztecs. Uh, this artwork here, which is called Frost, was made in celebration of the 100th anniversary of Robert Frost moving to Vermont. 
Um, once again, this is all on film. And this is printed on a paper called Japanese Kinwashi, which translates as golden paper. Um, one of my recent obsessions has been Egyptian papyrus. And uh, this last summer, even I created this piece, or actually just two years ago, created this particular artwork on Egyptian papyrus. It's called What If Vermont Was the Egyptian Afterlife? Um, and this was actually made as an in-camera collage on film with a custom one-of-a-kind pinhole camera. So it has these very beautiful sort of out-of-focus renderings, but you have to tell this amazing story. Um, and, it's just, and I love the story and how it relates to the paper. And it has this very organic, it almost feels and sounds like a leaf in the fall time. And these last two artworks that I'll talk about briefly is a new direction that I'm pushing a lot of the work. The idea of building collages with the images and with the different negatives and actually breaking out of the traditional photographic shape, breaking away from the idea of a square or a rectangle and building organic uh, shapes. And then Eve will be writing uh, in these pieces uh, once they finish drawing. So Steve and I, both being creative people, working side by side over the course of the last 20 some odd years, um, we, we always were working sort of bouncing ideas off each other in consultation with one another. And one of the ways uh, that that happened was I was frequently, I uh, have been Steve's model uh, for many years in many of his artworks, as have our two daughters who basically have grown up in front of the lens of the camera. Um, this particular piece I'm very fond of, it's from a series of work that Steve did that was inspired by white line block printing that was done in uh, Cape Cod, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, so there was, there's scratching that's done actually in the surface of the negative uh, and sort of a drawing and mark making that takes place in this particular piece that I, I think is really lovely. So as a classically trained photographer, uh, back in the early 2000s, I realized I wanted my work to go different places. I wanted to sort of break away from the traditional photographic path. Um, my book and show, uh, Through a Glass Darkly, was really sort of like the big push for that. It was where I sort of threw away uh, a lot of the traditions and a lot of the uh, methodology and started inventing my own ways of working. And one of the very first papers I ever worked on that was handmade was Gompi. Gampi's made in Japan. It's the rarest, oldest, and most sacred of all the Japanese papers. And I had an entire series called the Haiku series. And within the Haiku series, there were a handful of screens made. This is a, a movable folding Japanese screen that, once again, started out as an instant Polaroid process. I was one of Polaroid's 10 featured artists for almost a decade. Uh, and then would be printed on this beautiful translucent uh, Japanese Gampi. Um, in recent years, I've done work on wood. We've been printing directly on pieces of maple, pieces of uh, walnut, um, which is a complicated process. And here's a few more of them that are on the wood. These were all done on, this is on maple, this is on a veneer of cherry. Uh, and I always find that the, the material in a lot of ways influences the direction that the work is gonna go. So as we're going upstairs to the catwalk, you can see uh, many of Steve's earlier artworks and you can see that many of them feature our two daughters uh, modeling as, as the figure. And up here, we have one of the earliest works that Steve and I did collaboratively. And this is called The Tallest Tree I Can Find. Um, it's done, as you can see, in four panels on papyrus. And this is one of our purely fictional works where Steve brought the imagery to me and asked me to come up with a story that would go along with it. And so the story focuses on a narrator who is preparing to go on a hike in the forest, but they're troubled and they have these concerns, worries, um, and, they, and they have this idea to dig a hole in the forest and bury their troubles. So here on the lower level of the studio, it's really set up uh, for me to do processing of my film, working on my different computers, flattening materials, 
printing on the different handmade papers. So in the office portion here, come inside. I have my light table for editing my film, and my system is set up to where I have two computers. I have a Mac that I run uh, for the purposes of uh, image editing on um, creation of movies. I have a PC system that I run uh, for printing on the DaVinci printer, of which there's only one in the world, and it's in the next room. And then I have another Mac set up uh, with an Imicon scanner for the purposes uh, of when I need a very high resolution scan. Um, these are just some examples of just a handful of the cameras that I work with. Many of these are custom made. They're the only ones uh, like for here. These are all different pinhole camera systems that I had made for me, modified Leicas, 624s, and all of these to me are just tools. They're tools that I use for different purposes, for different visual qualities uh, that I'm looking for. So in this final room in the studio, this is where I do all of my film processing. processing. Uh, I use a lot of different developers from instant coffee to uh, developers that have unique characteristics with uh, the different films that I work with. Um, I've got my refrigerator, which is filled with film. I've got another safe, which is filled with even more cameras that I've been collecting over the last 30 years. Once again, they're all for different specific purposes. Um, here, uh, where the two printers are, I run two different printing platforms. This is the DaVinci system. Um, I had the very first one back in 2004. There were only a total of seven made. Um, it's a 54 inch wide, 12 color printer. Um, actually though, I'm now running it using 12 different dilutions of black. So it's a really amazing platform that gives me a lot of flexibility. And I also run a wide format Epson uh, P9000 system which is a Ferrari of printers. And between the two systems, sometimes I use them together. I'll do one print here, followed by here. And once again, all for sort of that creation of the visual qualities that I'm looking like to help tell the narrative that even I need for our works. So thanks for visiting Eve and Steve in Paula, Vermont. So thanks for visiting Eve and Steve. Here in Paula, Vermont. And we hope to see you here sometime soon. Let's do it again. <laughs> so thanks for visiting even Steve at Indian Hill in Paula, Vermont. We hope to see you here soon. Be well. <laughs>